Hello, I'm Bob the Booker and welcome to my channel. And today I'm going to be talking a little bit about books that I've read this week. And these are a little chunkier, um, which is a, a fun little little treat. Um, but let's uh, get into them. And uh, yeah, it's, it's been a fun week in terms of reading. There'll be some themes that naturally emerge. Um, and it's also a slight Booker break for me. Um, I'm going back to the Booker Prize almost immediately. But uh, I, uh, yeah, it was just sort of fun to, to read a little bit of other stuff for a moment anyway. So without further ado, let's get started on the books uh, that I read this week. First up, um, a book that I mentioned a couple of weeks ago that I was reading and finally eventually finished reading um, as part of a buddy read with Mark Nash. And that is Richard Millwood's uh, The Man Eating, sorry, not The, just man-eating typewriter. Um, and this is a bit of a wild one. Um, so the, the core idea of the book is that um, a publisher has received a manuscript or parts of a manuscript that seem to talk about a potential crime taking place and all these various other complicated things. But a lot of it is written in, well, the, almost the entire thing is written in Polari, uh, the sort of a, a language, uh, a sort of anti-language almost, that was used by um, LGBTQ people, particularly sort of gay and queer men, um, in a very specific time, um, and kind of has become less uh, used sort of day to day in sort of, you know, in, in recent years hasn't kind of uh, been used as much, but sort of particularly sort of up, up to about the 60s and 70s was sort of a bit more in its heyday. And the book is just this wild ride. It's quite a chunky book. It um, at times sort of veers off on these wild kind of tangents. Um, it sort of is partly a mystery book, partly some sort of thriller, partly just sort of a, an experiment. Um, and so it just does all these weird and wonderful things. At times I found it a little hard to follow. At times I was so in this and sort of so loved the narrative and that the way the story is told that I was completely sold on it. It's a complicated book for sure um, but particularly towards the end it starts building towards a really quite dramatic set of events um, where even things like there being highlighted letters um, or emboldened letters kind of spelling out things that are to do with the case at the heart of this book um, and, and things like that. You've also got regular footnotes from the publisher the, the publisher in the book um, so not the book's actual publisher but the the publisher within the story if that makes sense um, and that's kind of this added little layer that is quite fun because often they say things like we don't know what this is talking about or you know does this thing or isn't this thing funny and it's just a very funny and weird book in many ways um, so many left turns but really really good a fun number fun again being a, an odd word for some parts but a, a really good like puzzle almost to kind of play with um there's a very playful book in many many ways and i really enjoyed that about it on a similar note i read uh, fabulosa by paul baker and um, paul baker is a writer who i adore i've read a lot of his books so far they uh talk a lot about uh, particularly kind of lgbtq rights in the uk and sort of the development of that but a big part of his um, sort of academic research has been um, on Polari and so I kind of thought I'd been kind of kicking around wanting to read this for a bit anyway it was a book club book for for a reading group I'm part of and I kind of thought this is why not this week just at the same time as reading Man Eating Typewriter um, and so this uh, Fabulosa is a bit of a history of Polari it's kind of origins um, and kind of looking at it both from sort of an academic point of view at times but also very um very historical and very sort of social side of things so this is just really good fun at the same time it kind of uh, you know Paul Baker charts his life as well and how it interacts with Polari um, and how his research in trying to talk to people about their memories of Polari and using it often unveils quite a few other things as well so I, I really enjoyed this as a sort of um a complement to this but I think it works really well as a, a very accessible guide in and of itself to this whole other you know history and whole other world Next up, I read Close to Home by Michael McGee, and this is a book I've been really wanting to read for a while. I kept on hearing really positive things about it. I kept on seeing lots of people loving it. I kind of assumed it would be on the Booker long list um, or thought I might have a chance um, as well. But uh, either way, this is a book uh, that is set in mostly sort of Northern Ireland and looks particularly at 
uh, a set of characters who are really just trying to make ends meet and sort of get through the day. Uh, but particularly our central character who kind of lives in this very odd place almost in the sense that he is um he loves reading and writing he is an english lit graduate but keeps on finding himself in loads of trouble and so all these this sort of day-to-day -day life seems so kind of full of the grinding sort of gears of 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 kind of being stuck in the system but equally he has all these sort of other dreams and aspirations but not in that kind of pity narrative where you know like i leave my whole old life behind and i go and do this it really grapples with the fact that both of those things can sit side by side that you can be someone who is um caught up in in having to work a job that you really don't like um and also be someone whose interests lie elsewhere and i, I think it does deals with it really well there's there's a lot of sort of violence is maybe not the word there's a sort of lingering threat almost throughout this book I think and the way I think it's handled is really quite beautiful it's it's sort of the story is told through a really sort of authentic narrative and voice of the characters it's never self-pitying it's very much sort of describing what's around um, and I just I just found it a really interesting book in many many ways for that Next up, I read a book that I kept on seeing absolutely everywhere for a very long time, uh, In Memoriam by Alice Wynne. And so this is a story about two men especially, but um, a, a wide range of, of characters around them um, who are sort of, who know each other back home uh, and sort of seem to, there's this sort of lingering potential will they, won't, won't they sort of aspect of their relationship where it seems to be a very one-sided potentially relationship at least in at least in terms of what's verbalized but the, it's clear that either way they both care for each other deeply and there are a lot of feelings world war one happens they both go and serve separately um although the various parts are together um uh, well mostly together at the beginning part of this and they then have to sort of confront their relationship um alongside uh, what that means for also being on the the sort of on death's door basically constantly if you know potentially they're going to die at any moment does that speed up the way that they might think about each other and care for each other does that complicate it all of these sorts of things come up in, in quite a few ways and so I, I think you know this sort of story I think does something it sort of picks up in many ways from where authors like Pat Barker have sort of left off as well in terms of covering the the, the really complicated relationships um, that many men had with each other during wartime. Not it, not necessarily just in a romantic way, but how do you come back from something like war and talk about it with anyone? In some ways, these other men around you who have also served are the only people who get it and can understand what you've been through. Equally, they might be the last people you want to see because they remind you of this war, but you maybe can't go back to a civilian life in any easy way. So I think this book really brilliantly captures those aspects of it. Um, and at the heart of it is this sort of love story as well that sort of contains all this sort of these beautiful moments. Um, so I, I just, yeah, it is one of those things where the the ways I think this book often talks about shame um, around queer people is really quite Quite beautiful um and so yeah really greatly enjoyed this after having seen it absolutely everywhere <laughs> for a while it seems as well and last but not least i read love from the pink palace by jill nalder um, and this is a uh, sort of memoir of her talking about her life and if you've seen the tv show it's a sin which i still need to watch uh but a show like that uh she is um her character it, well, who she is, is uh, basically represented in It's a Sin. There is a character who is sort of, off, sort of both named for her, but it's basically her. <laughs> anyway, um, written by Russell T. Davis, who also is a good friend of Jill Nalder's. So that's kind of the connection as well. They sort of, they are childhood friends. Um, and so in this book, Jill Nalder talks about her history of essentially being kind of coming up and being a, a young woman during the time of the HIV AIDS uh, epidemic. Um, and so she talks about how um, she, you know, initially just friends of hers from, you know, her being involved in the theatre, she just started seeing people close to her get sick and start to die. 
and she in the middle of all of this lives in this place called the Pink Palace which is somewhere that she um, and a few friends had sort of been been renting and she loves it and it sort of turns into this safe haven for people who are going through some incredibly horrible uh, things you know it's, it's a time of confusion there's this this illness going around that nobody really knows much about um, the causes of it are unknown for a while the, the potential cures are a long way off and so people are just dying and really having a, a horrible time and so she um, I don't think in a self uh, self-congratulating way talks about how she looked after many of the people close to her to make sure that they were okay during all of this and it's really quite heartbreaking because she is talking about people who you know she'd seen in these really vibrant settings you know these are actors these are performers and she's watching them get sick and and die age sort of you know in their 30s 40s those sorts of ages and it's really confusing for her to sort of see this and be a witness to this part of history um so i just think it's a really important story um because particularly you know there were so many stories like this of people who weren't you know themselves ill um who were really doing a lot of incredible work to support people around them and uh, so these are the books that i read this week um it's been a fun mix i uh sort of yeah i've been really enjoying reading all of these there's definitely an lgbt sort of arc to a lot of them um but anyway uh i hope you're, you're doing really well i hope you have a fantastic week and i will see you soon have a have a wonderful time and i hope the week has been kind to you take care speak to you soon bye bye